I forgot her name, but she made this post on Instagram talking about people in the industry. I mean, these are top people who are working fashion shows, New York Fashion Week. They're doing, you know, magazines and things like that. She's like, it's, it's a shame that no one can work on my skin. And when I tell you she went off, she went off. And I even felt bad as a makeup artist. I'm like, oh, let me make sure I got my game on, that I can work on people who are even darker than I am or work on someone who is much fairer than me. And what I find with a lot of makeup artists, some people are intimidated to work on super fair. When I say super fair, I'm talking about like freckles, red hair, you know, they just like, what do I do to someone with freckles? And they don't, also don't know what to do with someone who's really, really dark skinned. So it's so important for you to list no makeup from every spectrum and be confident that whoever sits in your chair that you can work on them. To be honest with you, the main reason why a lot of people have those issues is because they don't have the tools in their kit. So if you don't have foundations that are for dark skin, especially a dark skin like my dark skin that has a mixture of yellow and red undertones, what are you going to do? The issue that when it comes to working with black skin is we have so many colors in our face. And people just like, I don't know what to do because I see uh, acne marks, the darkness, and the mistake that people make is they want to match the darkest part of the face and put it all over. And what happens then? You end up flattening the face. And let me tell you, with black people, we don't want to be darker than what we are. Okay? Everyone else is totally different. Where they want to be darker, they want to be a little bit more tan. No, not us. And we also don't want to be ashy. So it's so important to find that happy medium where you're brightening the skin without making them look ashy and you're not darkening their skin and making us look darker than we are. I don't want you to feel like, oh, a person who has oily skin, they don't need moisturizer. Everyone needs moisturizer. Okay? You want to prep the skin for everybody. Another one of my favorite products is a brand called Caudalie, that oil that I showed you. So this is just like a, a toner, really. Close for me, it's going to be a little spray, so it may scare you a little bit. So I kind of like to always start with these two items. Yep, you can open. Always start with this. Oh, these three. My remover, just to clean the face, because when the skin is nice and clean, keep in mind, you live in South Florida, it's always hot. We can just wake up in the morning, wash our face, we go outside, we're sweating, or a little oil. So if you actually putting makeup on top of that, ugh, you know, looks a little... It's not going to stay on as long. So prepping, removing, this is like my toner, and now we'll go to moisturizer. Normally, I would kind of let this set in a little bit, but let's just keep it moving. So, um, I use several different products, several different things, so I'll just kind of go over some of the things I like to use. Relax your face for me. So looking at her skin, what do you see? I'm sorry? T-zone is lighter. T-zone is lighter. What undertone do you see in her? <coughs> Golden. 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 Okay. Anything else? Relax. Anything else you see? Eyes are wide. Okay. Nothing she else. has a few dark spots. Okay. Don't be shy. <laughs> Any other colors you see? You only see golden? Nothing else? She has a mixture of yellow and red undertones. So she has, turn for me darling, here, you can put your head down a little, here quite golden, here very red, it's a little bit of blue in here. You all see what I'm saying? No? I see the red. You see a little bit of the red? I don't have that. Right here, yeah. So compare here to here. Is that the same undertone? No, no, she's no. darker than here. It's, yes, it's darker, but it's the same yellowy color. Oh, no. So that's what, we, that's what we're looking for. That's how you're going to break it down. And you can have a darker color that is yellow, but if it was completely yellow here, she would actually look a little bit green. That makes sense because mm -hmm. olive -y, right? That makes sense because mm -hmm. olive -y, right? Yeah. So she has a mixture of golden tones. Like even down her nose, she's lighter, but it's, com it's red. Like I, I totally see red. This is what I want you to do before you start working on any client. Like before you start, okay, I'm just going to go on my kid and start putting stuff on. I want you to step back and analyze their face. Because if you don't, you're, not, you're never going to know what color or colors to put on them. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so looking at her skin now, how we feeling? This is just prep. 
I'm big on prepping. Some people just throw it on. Like, I love Victoria because Victoria is, like, literally the fastest makeup artist I've ever seen in my entire life. She would have been done by now. <laughs> and I'm still prepping. But I think it's so important to prep the skin. And I always kind of touch if there are any excess oils on her face. If you notice, she's actually oily. But I added moisturizer and she's less oily. Does make sense? I'm going to start with skin because that's the most important thing. I'm going to do full face everything, but let's start with skin. I'm going to use a mixture of foundations. I'm going to use a little bit of Victoria's foundations as well as a little bit of another brand, Cinema Secret. So I'm going to mix the two together. This color here is called Kelvin, which is going to be perfect in the center of her face because it has like this yellow golden undertone. And we're going to, if you'd also notice, you see a little orangey mm -hmm. in there. Anything with a little bit of orange, I promise you, is going to work great on black skin. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you. You want to pay attention to colors like this. Like even when you are searching for brands, go with the colors that have a hint of orange in it because that's what's going to add the golden tone to our skin. And that's what we need, especially in the center of the face. I don't want to put this all over her face. What's going to happen? She's going to end up a little too light. Yeah. We want to avoid that. So because she has three different, I see, I personally see three different colors in her face. I want to make sure I'm using at least three different color foundations. I always do a swatch, especially if I've never worked on a person before. I'm going to do a little light blending. What do you, what do you think of that? Yes. You're not going I am. I am. I know what she's saying. Yes, I am. But I personally, I like to match the face to the body. So I want to test on the body. So I like to test on the chest and put all of my colors together. And then I'm going to place it where I want it to be. Like I'm not going to mix all of these colors and make one color and put it on. I'm going to do three different colors and place it exactly where I want it to be. So with this here, I'm actually, it's not that bad. It's, it's red. It's going to work on the darker parts of her face. I'm going to go to another one. Let's just see how this one looks. Do you guys see it from there? Yeah. It's a little lighter. It's a little lighter, but I think it's actually a little too blue for her. You could probably use it as a contour. So I think that's what I will do. You can see that one is much lighter. But what I want you to also pay attention to is the undertone. This here is Victoria's, the one that I'm going to put in the center for sure. Like if you see where she's a little bit yellow here, I love how that color blends. This one's a little bit off for me, but I think these two colors are going to be perfect. And then once you blend them together, I'm see where you are. So swatching is essential. But you see how you see the undertones on the skin? Because in the palette, you're going to be like, what do I do? So this color is quite bright. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is going to get rid of any. Actually, she doesn't even have a lot of discoloration or a lot of darkness. But I'm going to use this directly. I like to use like an eyeshadow brush. <coughs> Look all the way up for me. Uh, try to relax your face. There we go. Keep your head here. And look all the way up to the ceiling. And down. Perfect. So I'm going to just apply this only where it is dark. She's not completely dark underneath her entire eye, so I don't want to take that all over. So only where she's really dark. Now, I'm not going to take this over her acne marks because I actually want you to, I'm going to show you how to kind of conceal um, acne darkness. So you can totally use a corrector. Like if I was to use a corrector, I'll just take this and just tap it on. But gonna just you know have faith in my um, foundation that it can actually get rid of the discoloration. You ever use dermablend? Um yeah. Dermablend is a little much for me. Like when it comes to the it's it's a little too thick in my opinion. Yeah, it's thick. It's, yeah, it's a full cover. It is super full. Like it can cover tattoos so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like your dermablend? Yes ma'am. Because I could not blend with you on my chin with it. You'll see no marks when you use Dermablend. You know which one I like a little bit better than Dermablend is one from Cover FX. They have a cream foundation. Mm -hmm. 
is so good. But it's like easier to use. It's yeah, not the as brain color effects. Yeah, the brain cover effects, yeah. So I want you to just look at her face from this is just correcting. And again, I'm using this, as you can see, it's pure orange. Max sells this as a highlighter. It's not. It is definitely a corrector. And I like using an eyeshadow brush to apply this because I have so much control of where it's going and how much is going on. Um, like I don't like to use a lot of makeup. You're a little bit dry in this area and in here. So I don't want to add any more moisturizer. We need this more so dead skin. So the importance of exfoliating. <laughs> Always tell your clients, especially when you get your brides and things like that, if they don't exfoliate, Ugh. the makeup isn't going to sit basically on top of that. So it's really important to get rid of it. Open for me. So I want you to see the difference in her face. And this is just correcting. Do you see a difference? When you correct first, this does not make it easier to see her undertone. Yeah. Versus over here, you see so many different colors. Yeah. Trust me, correct first. It will make your life so much easier. Don't just go into, okay, I'm going to start highlighting and do, no. You're just going to end up with too much makeup. Usually, if I don't correct, I notice that their makeup doesn't even last as long. I know that may sound weird, but it doesn't. Because you're doing like light layers, that's going to keep the coverage on. Mm -hmm. But it also, I find that I end up using less makeup. So I think about that. I'm going to use more makeup when I don't correct and it doesn't last as long. Okay? Less is so much more. All right, I'm going to now move on, and I'm going to do a little bit of highlighting. So I like to use, again, this color. I'm, this is going to be my highlight, my concealer, my even extra correction all in one. So I'd really like to press, 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 press this into my foundation because I want to have full control of how much is coming. Um, I am not a, you'll just see a difference in my technique. I don't like to just draw on the face and then blend later especially, excuse me, when I'm using cream products because cream products are so much more, they're thicker. So I like to blend them as I'm putting it on so it's setting blended mm -hmm. and not setting while I'm trying to blend it out. Is that making yeah. sense? Yeah. Because sometimes, you know that you end up doing this? Mm -hmm. And you know what you end up doing to that person's face? Exfoliating. You're exfoliating their skin by blending too much. And especially for like her skin, is, is she's oily here but she's dry in certain areas. Like, I love a sibling brush. I think it's great, but it does not work on people with dry skin because you're doing a swirling motion. You're actually exfoliating the face. Like, it only works on people like me who's oily, in my opinion. Or if you're just going to use it to apply blush once you already have product on, it's fine. But mm -mm. if you have dry skin, it's just not a good brush to use on that person. So I like a flat brush to apply my foundation because I feel like I have control of exactly where it's going. So I'm patting. I'm paying attention to her face, her cheekbone. I don't want this color to go any lower than her cheekbone. My darling, you can close your eyes. Yeah, so you can relax. It's not killing you too much. I see it all the time. Black girl trying to look light skin, trying to look lighter. You know, don't do it. Embrace the color is what I tell every, everyone. That's like one of my favorite things about me is my skin complexion. And it's like some people, it's like it's wrong. It's not. It's just your color. It is what it is. But I don't want to put a color that's this color or this color over her face either because that's actually going to make her appear darker than what she actually is. She's not. So the importance of paying attention to every part of the skin, every part of the face, all of the undertones is going to be what's going to kind of help to kind of make sure that you are matching the person's skin tone. Now I like a beauty blender. I like to take it and just make sure it's nice and seamless and I don't see because I'm stopping at that edge. I don't want to leave it like that. So I'm going to just kind of blend it down. Okay, I'm going to take that same color. I'm going to put a little bit of that in the forehead. She has a cute little forehead, so I don't need to do too much, but this is only for color purposes. This is not to make her forehead, like highlighting it to make it uh, bigger. It's not necessary. So I'm not going to take it any higher than that. This is only for color. You see how I'm like standing basically behind her? Don't do this when you recommend your clients. You want to stand right in front because that's how you're going to make things as symmetrical as possible. I mean, of course, I have to stand to the side for demo, 
but um, this is literally the worst way to do makeup, like standing to the side. Like I noticed some people, it's like I'm working on this side, they come on this side. When they're working on someone, they come, no. You want to literally stand right in front of your client so you can see the whole face. It helps so much more. So here, she has a little bit of darkness, a little acne, and a little acne scarring. Again, I just want to focus on that area. As you can see, I didn't pick up tons and tons of product, but I'm just patting it on. You can keep your eyes closed. Look. If you just do this, you see how you still see the mark? Nope. Pat, 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 pat right on it. And that's what's going to get rid of the discoloration. Keep in mind, too, doesn't matter what type of makeup you're using, it doesn't matter if it's airbrush. Your makeup is never going to get rid of acne. It's never going to get rid of texture. If you have someone who have acne scars or uh, the craters in their face, it is what it is. Can't get rid of it. My pimple, my mountain on my, can't get rid of it. It doesn't matter how much you put on. Actually, the more makeup you put on, the worse it starts to look. So less is really still more at the end of the day. Um, when it comes to makeup, me, I personally, I feel that skin is way more important than eyebrows and eyes and lashes and lips. I know a lot of people, you know, love their smoky eyes or whatever, but if the skin isn't good, if the skin isn't done well, then none of that other stuff is going to look good either. So I spend way more time on the foundation than I do anything else. If you notice, and again I'm not big on contouring, but um, by highlighting the nose first, you automatically see where her contour, contour lines go. I think it's harder when you contour the nose first, and then you try to highlight, you just end up going to either wipe the contour away, or it's going to not be in the proper place. So if you highlight down the nose, you know exactly where your contour should be. What about like for mature eyes? Because they seem to crease. They do, but again, you can use a cream. Just and they have creams that are matte too. Okay. So um, it doesn't have to be one that is like super shimmery. Like this has a little sheen in it, but it's not shimmery, shimmery. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna take a clean brush and just soften those edges because we've already got her crease color on, which was the the bronzer. Oh, poor thing, close. Poor thing. <laughs> oh, I feel bad for her. I feel like I'm killing her. Just to kind of go over the same brush that had the bronzer on it. And her highlight underneath the brow, we've already put foundation there. So if you're applying a little bit of product at a time, you shouldn't even need to go and put anything else. Now I'm going to use a little bit of face powder, and we can use that close as just to finish off the eye. As you can see, it's just a color that's very close to her skin. That's usually what I like to do for uh, a dark skin. It's not wrong to have a shimmer highlight. I mean, some clients are going to prefer that. I personally just don't like it. It's just not my preference, especially using something that's quite shimmery on the eyelid anyway. So her highest point of her eye is right here. What I'm going to do is draw a little dot. And then from here, I'm going to do short strokes. <coughs> And I'm using a pencil. I don't want you to worry when it comes to liner about making a straight line. No. Do a little tiny dashes. And then you're going to use a brush to smooth it out later. Okay. Turn a little bit. Now I'm going to have you look down at your knees with your eyes open. You're going to keep your head here. And you're going to look down at your knees. And then you're going to bring your eyes over here. See where my hand is? So you stay looking right here at my arm. And then I'm going to do, again, kind of tiny with little strokes. Very gently. Barely touching her. Lord, she's breathing hard. Poor baby. <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing. I feel bad. Next, my next thing I'm going to ask, okay, I need a black girl who doesn't have twitchy eyes. <laughs> no, you're totally fine. Now I'm just going to take a brush. And I'm just going to smooth out. No, keep your eyes completely closed. 
and I'm going to smooth out the line. And I want to do this before it dries. That's just a dry brush that you're applying yep. over the pencil. Exactly. Do you use the gel? I do. I love gel. So I would do the gel exact same like technique. Like okay. Open for me, love. Okay. Look down. Look down. Just with your eyes. Mm -hmm. The gel that, uh, the gel in the kit. Of course. Yeah, it's like it's heavy duty. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the Oprah. <laughs> the Oprah gel liner. Yeah, it's really it's serious. Yeah. So I'm gonna my orange blush, as you can see, nice and bright. I love it. <laughs> Relax your forehead, darling. <laughs> I like to use a fan brush to apply blush. So just to add a little bit of warmth to the skin, nothing too crazy. And I'm like barely touching her face because this color is so pigmented, as you can see. And she has such a cute little face, so I'm just following her exact cheeks. It's not necessary to kind of correct. Like, don't touch that. <laughs> kind of add a little bit extra, same brush, just a little bit extra of a, like a little highlight, a little sheen. Again, I'm going for something more golden. You don't need to smile, don't worry. <laughs> Then just kind of take a little bit, whatever's left on the brush. So you don't always have to use concealer? If you need it. Again, when I'm using cream products, I tend to not. <laughs> <laughs> Finishing powder. No <laughs> Mm -hmm. Almost. <laughs> Poor thing. I should have asked you, do you like getting your makeup done? Yeah, well, I just don't like my eyes. Aww. Poor thing. I'm sorry. Close. Hold on to your forehead. I'm going to use a darker powder, finishing powder. Just certain parts of the face where that's your forehead. And everything will make more sense with the brows on. Um, brushing up, so brow starts in a good place here, but we actually need to bring it in a little bit because her eyes are a hint wide, not too much. Um, also, if you want the nose to appear a little bit smaller, bring the eyebrows in. That also helps. It's a better trick, in my opinion, than contouring the nose. The wider your brows are apart, the wider your nose is going to appear. So I like to do just nice short strokes, not much hair on here, so I need to kind of create it. What um, color are you using for her eyebrows? This is a dark brown. My mom always asks me to fill in her eyebrows, and she always starts laughing while I'm doing it, and smiling, and just making all these expressions. And I'm like, Mom, yeah. please. <laughs> all crooked. <laughs> <laughs> So you want your brow to stay, you can always use brow gel, but this is another technique just to throw in a little bit of powder and it helps and also lightens the yes. hint. And she looks better with a lighter brow than the deep brown. And like, I'm not kidding, I don't do anything else to brows. Outside of if it's thick hair, unruly hair, then I put brow gel, but that's it. Like a lot of people, you know, from this point, they're going to do the 
I just don't think it's necessary, especially if you're creating a good shape. Now, do you do like a specific technique? Because I know a lot of people. Come to it. <laughs> so when you're working on um, dark skin, especially, you definitely need to invest in some brown pencils. I'm going to use a lighter one right inside of that, and I'm kind of just going to do a little bit of softening downward. I'm not going to fill in the entire lip, but just to kind of soften the line a hint. <laughs> I don't want to take the brown, the dark brown all the way in because then we're just going to end up with a brown lip color. I'm just going to add a, a hint of a color on her. And you guys all know if you want to do the, I want to make the smaller, you draw inside the lip, the lip line. If you want to make them bigger, you can draw right on top of the lip line or a little bit on the outer edge just to kind of um, give a little extra. I like to mix. I'm all about mixing. Just kind of get my color together. That's a brush? Yes. So you see this has, this is a nude color for black skin. It has like a little mauve tone to it. <laughs> oh, it looks so pretty. So now I'm just going to soften the line that we created just by blending a little bit more.